Welcome back to the Catholic Influencers Extended Podcast Interview for Season 12, Episode 3. I'm Augie Angrisano, and this season I've been so privileged to interview all these inspiring individuals from across the world, hear their testimonies, their stories, and their perspective on the Gospel. So this week's Gospel is John 6, 60-69. And for an in-depth breakdown, make sure you go listen to that full episode with Alyssa, Justine, and Father Rob. It's available on all platforms now. Today's guest is Sharon Diker. She's a mother of 11 children. Yes, 11. And she's an incredible witness to the faith. So let's get started and welcome this week's guest, Sharon. Hi, Augie. Very blessed to be here. Oh, we're so happy to have you here. First question I love to ask, who is Sharon? Oh, um, yeah, well, I'm a Christian uh, mother of 11 children married to John. uh, Mm. We've been married for 22 years, and uh, we we just um, moved three years ago to North Queensland from Melbourne, and we love it here. Beautiful sunshine. Oh, good. We are a family of faith, and we love Jesus, and um, we just together, uh, we're growing our faith, and together we bring the mission um, to spread the gospel of Jesus to all those we meet, especially families. Oh, how beautiful. I know that move was a really big decision for your family. What was the heart behind that? Well, we actually felt God called us here. Uh, John came here a few years before on uh, our mission um, and played a a music um, worship at a conference. And I had never been to Townsville, but when we we prayed about what the Lord wanted us to do, because our son actually wanted to play soccer in Spain, so we actually had to sell our house in order to pay for him to do that. Oh, wow. And so I think all of that, God was working in all that. And uh, so it wasn't just for Samuel, but it was for our whole family. So it just amazing uh, move that God led us to. Mm. Sharon, was it difficult for you to choose Christ and decide to take the Catholic faith seriously? Was that difficult? Was it smooth sailing for you? How was that decision for you personally? Well, growing up as a uh, born a Catholic, uh, my mom was very strong in her faith, Um, and she always brought us to church, um, and we could see she prayed. We prayed the rosary together. So it was just normal for for me. It wasn't until uh, I went to university that I I encountered so many other worldly views, Mm. and I was very challenged, and it was so easy for me to uh, embrace those worldly views. And it wasn't until in an encounter with the Holy Spirit that I had a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit that I had uh, in as a young adult that I, I realized, hey, this is this is I, I'm all in for Jesus. I, I realized how ignorant I was of my faith. I did there was so much I didn't know, mm. and so many uh, views that I were not Catholic, were not Christian, and so uh, it just opened my eyes and. After that, I was all in, and everything I have done since then, and as we do as a family, is Jesus is the center. So just, yeah, so that, that experience um, just just helped me in my faith and just keep growing, and I've kept growing since. Oh, how beautiful. Was there something happening in your life that prepared your heart for that place of surrender? You know, I feel like for me personally, it was just I was drank the world's Kool-Aid and was choosing darkness, and, and now I'm just so tired of choosing darkness, and I was brought to this place of surrender, you know, from that, those mistakes. Was that kind of the same for you, or what, what prepared you uh, for total surrender to, to Jesus? I think it was that inner search for God that's always been there, and I look back and so many times, you know, God showing me through um, faith-filled friends, um, especially you know, this is the way, but I wanted to go my own way. And through relationships that didn't work and um, things like that, I just came to a a place where this is not what I'm meant to be doing. Mm. And it wasn't until one day I said yes to joining a youth group. And after that, I've just kept saying yes to the Lord. And it just, yeah, I just can't say no to him. There's no turning back, (laughs) no turning back at all. 
Yeah, it's kind of like God chooses us more than we choose him sometimes, Lord. right? <laughs> <laughs> Next exactly. question I have, um, you know, has Jesus ever asked you to do something that you just didn't want to do and you only acted out of obedience? You know, for example, in the gospel today, uh, we, we heard that, you know, it was Jewish custom to not eat flesh or blood. And so everyone got freaked out. And, you know, Peter was conflicted. And we see this where he just said, obviously, I want to reject this. I was born, you know, I was raised hearing that, that I need to live this way. But now you're, now you're asking something different. And I'm just being obedient in this. Has that kind of happened to you where it was just not what you wanted and it was just acting out of obedience? Well, I, I think he was a bit easier on me. There wasn't anything extreme as such, <laughs> oh, but there was good. a time where um, my husband, John, now we were dating and uh, he he was going to Rome on a pilgrimage. And um, I knew that we couldn't go, I couldn't go with him because we're only dating and the temptation is too strong. And um, we were wanting to do the right thing. Uh, and so I knew I couldn't go, but in my heart, I just, that desire was there. I really wanted to go with him and experience that with him. And mm. then it was Holy Thursday and we had adoration before the Blessed Sacrament in our church and I was praying to the Lord and I heard this voice saying, no, you're not going. Wow. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm not going. And wow. after that, that, that desire just went away. It just went away and I just accepted his will and I accepted that. And... uh yeah, so when, when he speaks, it's like, okay, Lord, okay, um, I'll do your will now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I'm, I'm just trying to, I guess, hear that voice in my own life more and more. And the more, and like, you know, the more I dive into Scripture and, and just spend time with the Lord, I feel like it gets easier. For example, the other day, like, I was, I was about to post something. Like, I was going to, like, add something to my story, and it was, like, this Christian song. And I thought, oh, like, this is this is cool. It'll be like, you know, um, a good thing. And then like, I was about to like go and I was going to hit post. And as soon as I was about to hit post, this like thought just came to my mind. It was like, you're not doing this for God. You're just doing this so that people will like see you. And I like got like stopped. I was like, I like didn't hit post yet. And I was like, wait, but this is a Christian song. This is like, this is a good thing. And then I just like to confirm, I was like, God, is this, is this glorifying you by me posting this? And I just literally flat, I was like, no. <laughs> And I was like, oh, okay. So it was just like trying to discern those thoughts in my head. Um, do you find that, has that gotten easier for you as you walk with Christ? Like, do you bring God into the conversation? Like, Lord, should I have two coffees today? Or, you know, stuff like that. Oh, look, I, I'm asking him every day for help. Um, and the times I don't ask him, uh, I'm, he shows me that I needed to ask him and I'm humbled in those mm. times. And especially being a mother of um, so many children mm. uh, where you do have to let go of your will every day or there's going to be war. Um, mm. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I say, why battle God? Well, he's going to win anyway. Uh, but, yeah, just each and every day just asking him for help in all those things and, yeah, listening to his voice. We need to constantly speak to him, um, have that conversation like we do um, with the people close to us and yeah. just say, Lord, you know, I need help here. Even I've asked him for things like buying a present for someone, you know, what's mm. what's a great present for someone? And one of my friends even prayed for a good haircut, you know. Yeah, I was like, why not? On. You know, awesome. all those little things. God yeah. wants to be in our life, like you said. He wants mm. to be in everything. He wants to hear the honest thoughts that are going because he, well, he knows them already. Mm. Uh, but right. he just wants that honesty from us. And even mm. if it's a cry for help, even if it's um, many times I've had times where I'm like, I can't do this, Lord. I can't do it. And, you know, and he He, he shows himself to us in those times that, that sometimes brokenness and that vulnerability, which sometimes we're scared, you know, to show. Yeah. But he knows us through and through already. Mm. Um, so, yeah, and it's so beautiful because that's where you grow in your faith with him and, and um, you just accept that love that he wants to give you. Mm. You know, my um, father growing up was this international Catholic speaker and my parents were very faith-filled um, so you think I would be, uh, but 
it kind of wasn't the case for a really, really long time. And I feel like all of my siblings, we've just sort of had this rebellious sort of feel about us where we question, is the faith brought down to us the actual move, you know? Is that what we should do? Is that what we choose for our lives? And I'm at the point now where I feel like I've touched the stove enough and I'm done and I'm choosing it for myself. But now I have kids and, oh man, I just really want to protect them from the mistakes that I've made. And I don't want them to touch the stove as much as I did. Do you have any advice just for passing the faith down to your children? I know you have a lot of them. Um, Any tips that you have, any advice? Yeah, definitely. Like we have, so our youngest are our four-year-old twins, twin boys, and our eldest is 21. So we've got a Mm. broad spectrum, although the whole adult child thing is new to us. Mm. Um, And what we've learned is leading by example as a parent. Yeah, okay. Just in all honesty. So the children have seen our struggles um, and they've prayed with us. We've prayed with them in their struggles and listening to each other, and they've seen how we pray to God for the answer, for the solution, uh, and that comfort in those times. Uh, But, yeah, mainly leading by example, and that's not just in words, uh, but also in decisions we make about what shows to watch, what music to listen to. And Mm. in the world it just seems so extreme. Yeah. Uh, but it's so important because being a Christian is not just a name, it's actually uh, a life. This yeah, is how we lifestyle. live our life, Absolutely. centered on Jesus in everything we do. And so if they see that example that we're doing that, they they notice everything. They see it and uh, we're corrected many times. Mom, Dad, is that what you meant to do or say? And things like that. And we're like, oh, sorry, yes, yes. <laughs> so they've seen us in our failures as well. Uh-huh. And they see that we're human. You know, we're not perfect. So it allows them to know they don't have to be perfect uh, and that they are still loved in all that. So loving them through that faith, um, yeah, but wow. leading by example and showing the fruits of the Holy Spirit to them, whether it's um, patience, love, self-control, Mm. Um, not just with them, but with others as well, because they see and watch how we behave with others as well. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, they God has blessed us with them to help us to be holy. He blesses us with a husband or wife to grow in holiness. So praise God. He wants us to be holy. It's not easy, but you know, he I can't you can't see any other life other than living life in him. I just think back now. And I just think how painful it would have been for my parents, you know, to watch me just choose the wrong thing over and over and over again, you know, and then just be like, ah, like I have the medicine, like just take the medicine, (laughs) you know, but me just, you know, continually not choosing it. And I just know that's a big pain point for parents, you know, who are of the faith and just trying to love their children through making that choice for themselves. Um, have you experienced that pain? I, I pray that you haven't. Maybe, maybe you haven't experienced this. And if you haven't, you know, um, could you kind of speak on, on a, a friend's case scenario or something where just that pain of, of, of the parent wishing that they would choose, you know, the faith for themselves and what's some advice you have for them, you know? Um, you know, well, I think our children are too scared to go off. Um, <laughs> go off the rails because we've told them, we've actually shared with them our own experience as young people and oh, the good. bad decisions that we made and the consequences, and I think that scared them <laughs> a little bit <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> um, to some extent. But, you know, there's been little things where they, they haven't made right choices and things, but we have realised that and, um, you know, have gone to confession so they know, you know, that they can go to God, go to the priest to say sorry, you know, and start again. Mm. Um, but, you know, th- we we can't forget that this gift that God has given us of choice, the gift to choose Him or not, mm. and the unfortunately, yeah, some children they ha- we have to let them go to make that decision. Yeah. But if we've 
show them that we are praying for them and they know we're praying for them and that we are loving them through whatever they're going through, that we will be here for them rather than judging them, rather than, you know, it's so easy as a parent to go, no, you shouldn't do this, you know. Yeah. But they they are facing a lot of turmoil inside of them in this day and age. There's so many expectations on them. There's so many things worldly that they've got to compete with um, and they just want to belong. Yeah. So if at home they always know there's a place to belong, a place mm. that they're loved, despite mm. what they do, despite what path they choose, then yeah. they will see, hopefully, and realize when God gives that that wisdom and grace to say, hey, what I'm doing is not fulfilling me. It's not making me happy. It's yeah. actually hurting me. Mm. Uh, maybe my parents were right. Yeah. And you just pray for that prodigal son or daughter to come back. Mm. You know, and I know it can, and I know it's possible because my husband John is a prodigal son. Oh, wow. I'm married to a prodigal son, and he's oh, an amazing beautiful. man. Mm. You know, he lived a life almost like, he said, maybe like St. Augustine, um, you know, but he's a beautiful man of God. And, um, you know, he has helped me so much in my faith. So, what, you know, that's a miracle what God can do in him. He can do that to any child who's not chosen God. So, don't, parents, don't give up hope. Keep praying for them, keep loving them, and being there for them. Oh, man, that's an incredible answer to that. Let's dive into the gospel reflection for this week. Um, what struck you? Uh, what would you like to share with the audience? Oh, I've read, just reading, reflecting over the gospel. Um, a few times, I actually really love this gospel because mm. basically summing up, it's a gospel about Jesus um, challenging us, are we all in for him or we're not? Mm. That's pretty much it. And they, I love the words he uses. I, I read a few notes and, um, you know, he says, um, are you, uh, you know, are you offended by what I say? Um, and it's like, oh, Okay, uh, because they re- the disciples in the gospel struggled with embracing that Jesus is the bread of life. They just couldn't grasp, you know, that. And many of them left because they just couldn't accept that. And that was really, really, really sad. But as again, this is a choice that they had to make. So in this gospel, Jesus says, you know, are you, are you all in for me or not? Um, are you going to walk away from me or are you going to stay and embrace all that um, I'm teaching you, all that I you know, want you to have um, with life in me? And being the bread of life, he is our spiritual nourishment that can't compare to anything in the world. Mm. Uh, and once you say yes to him, you don't want to go back to anything of the world. Uh, so he's offering us so much. He's offering his whole self. And, yeah, unfortunately, people choose, but we just keep praying that many are filled with God's grace because it's his grace that, that we can come to him. We pray for the grace that they will choose him and say yes to Jesus. I'd love to jump back to motherhood real quick. We were talking a little bit before we jumped into the recording about conversational prayer. And, you know, I look at my prayer life um, versus uh, my wife's as we're raising this family. And, you know, I, I feel like I, I just naturally have more time to hide away and to, to get that time of prayer more than my wife does. The kids just always need her. And, uh, and you know, she just talks about the struggle of, of just, just finding that time for herself. Um, and, and she also kind of talked about what you were sh- saying of just that conversational prayer. Just, you know what, maybe I don't have time. To, 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 to do a rosary today, or I don't have time to read scripture, but, but I'm going to bring Jesus with me, and I'm just going to have a conversation with him, you know, as I go throughout my day. I know a lot of mothers, you know, get down on themselves because they just think like, oh, I didn't, I didn't pray the rosary today, or something like that. Uh, you know, could you just speak a little bit on, on what, what it's like just to have that, that prayer life as a mother, and when you're in, in the thick of it, you know, how do you just bring your prayer life with you into the day? Oh, it's so easy as a mom. We beat ourselves up all the time about these things. We have so many expectations of what we should be doing for ourselves and for our family. But, you know, God already knows our heart, you know, and our intention. And Mm. for mothers, all I say is like that first five minutes of the day, 
whether it's like sign of the cross, Lord, I surrender everything of this day to you because mm. as a mother, nothing goes to plan um, and anything could happen. So you could set mm. a time, you know, for this and this, but, yeah, it doesn't go to plan. I remember it, uh, at one time my husband, um, he wanted to, I think he just wanted to sit down, I don't know if it was to pray the rosary or something, for yeah. um, 10, 15 minutes, and then a child came in and then they threw up all over him. Oh, no. So it was, no. that 15 minutes was cleaning it all up. And, yeah. you know, it happens to fathers, happens to mothers, you know, as well. But the main thing is when you're loving your family, that is a prayer. That's what mm. a, a beautiful priest told me that once when I was, you know, getting, um, feeling this guilt that I'm not doing enough in prayer. And he said, when you love your children, when you do those acts of love and serve your family, that is a prayer in itself. It's the greatest act of love, um, you know, that you can have. And I remember I was quite zealous in my, um, as a young adult when I um, was really passionate about my faith. Um, and, uh, you know, a priest, I said I wanted to spend half an hour praying, and he said, well, if your mum needs you, you can't be going half hour in prayer and neglecting, you know, um, the help that she needs from you. So it's same as parents. We can't neglect our children, but like you said, involve God in um, your day, whether yeah. it's praying with your children, praying um, for them, with them, asking God to help in the crazy times, many times at dinner time, which is so crazy. I call it um, four to seven, the happy hours, when everything gets a bit crazy and trying to cook dinner. And mm. I, I've, I've, I've yelled out, Lord, you're going to have to do something here because <laughs> I can't yeah. do it on my own. Yeah. And then, you know, it's not until a few hours later I look back and go, how did we get by? How did that happen? How did, you know, we just manage to get through so just inviting him, um, you know, driving in the car, we sort of um, sometimes, yeah, we say morning prayers in the car together. That's a given every day when we're driving out. Um, and, yes, when you can, you can pray the rosary together, but not everyone has the time. A beautiful friend said you can pray the Joey rosary. So oh, it's one that? Our Father and three Hail Marys oh, and not cool. ten. Oh, That's a great and idea. sometimes when you have, yeah, and when you have young children, um, that's a bit more bearable. So at least you're praying something and they do get to know what the mysteries are. Or sometimes we pray just a decade or or spontaneous prayer. And that's yeah. the the prayer of the heart that we can pray anytime as well. Yeah. And um yeah, so there's so many ways, but just being open to God and just uh not being too hard on yourself, you know, and yeah, loving your family is the greatest prayer as well. Uh, I just love that idea of conversational prayer. Can you define that in your own words real quick for us? Well, just like I'm speaking to you, just being honest, being open and honest, um, you know, in terms of our relationship with God, uh in times, especially when we're struggling, sometimes we don't seek help. Um, but just asking God, please help me. And mm. sometimes that um, that's all that's needed just to relieve that stress of the day or, or um, you know, getting through, getting by, and just that honesty. And, uh, yeah, the little things and big things, asking the Lord, you know, to help you and acknowledging that he's there, acknowledging that he's a part of your life. So talking to him constantly. When I was younger, I used to write in my diary, dear God, dear God. And now it's like through my day, oh, Lord, please, please help this child with their school today. Or, mm. oh, Jesus, please help me. I've got to cook this meal. I don't know if I can do it. You know, just help me put things together right. Um, you know, please help me drive safely. So little things like that, you know, just every day. So quite simple and just be ourselves with the Lord. Sharon, it's just been such a blessing having you on the show. We really appreciate your witness and your testimony. Thank you for jumping on. Um, God bless you and God bless your family. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. God bless you all. All right. That's a wrap for this episode. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. And for a detailed discussion of this week's gospel, tune into that full episode of the Catholic Influencers Podcast. It's on all platforms. And like always, find all of our social media links at catholicinfluencerspodcast.com. Join us again next week.
See you there.